So, um, we did our lab on, um, start. So, um, we did our lab on a kind of conveyor belt sort of thing. Um, uh, we got two two by fours and we got um, rods and we used plastic bearings to um, mount the rods and we pulled a mass across the rods to cause the rods to spin and we analyzed the spinning of the rods, the force applied on the mass going across, the friction and things like that. Um, our purpose of the lab was to determine the factors that affect the, um, affect the speed of the rotation of the rods. Um, we predicted that as we increased the force applied on the rod, that the speed would increase. And then for our second experiment, we changed the angle of elevation while keeping the mass constant. And we predicted that as the angle increased, the speed will also increase because you have to work to apply a greater force to pull up a higher incline. Okay, and this is like over here. We have a picture of the thing we built. And it's kind of hard to see with that picture, but the, those are the rods and the um, bearings, and you slide something over it, and they, they turn. <clears throat> so after we did our experiment, and it didn't actually go the way we thought it would go, we decided to draw some free body diagrams. And so this is experiment one, when, it was ho when the um, conveyor belt was laid horizontally, and, the, and with the thing sliding across it, and this is when we had it at an angle. Um, this is uh, um, going deeper into experiment two because you have the force of friction going backwards, you have mg going straight down. This, and with the angle, you have the normal force going at a strange angle that's um, going against the, the um, x component of the vectors going against the force applied. And um, we wanted to figure out the friction, the force of friction in this experiment because in the first experiment, they're equivalent to each other, the force applied and the force of friction because the um, item is not um, accelerating. But in this one, um, the force of friction is not equal to the force applied because of the angle and the normal force and things. So um, we changed the axis and like made that plot, and then we resolved this vector and used that angle of elevation as the angle between mg and the y-axis, and then we did some algebra to, um, to solve for the coefficient of friction, to solve for the force of friction, to solve for the normal force, and stuff like that. That was really fun to do. <laughs> So the procedure, we've kind of already gone through that. And this is how we got our force. And this is it. This is us like overcoming the force of static friction. And then we pulled it with a constant force, as you can see, kind of here. And that is usually when the, either one of the bearings broke or it just fell or fell yeah, like, um, which happened quite yeah, The section here is the good data. And then here, like, um, when you get to a certain point, like, um, we only use four or so rods. And we only analyzed a single rod. So as you, the farther you got along, like, um, we already started to pull it off of the system, so we couldn't like use that data as good data. Well, we'll go into more of this data when we get to our graphs. I think we can talk about it now. Um, this is um, experiment one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay. And, um, the, this, first, this first trial here, um, we had just uh, applied oil to the rod to like allow it to spin better, and um, the amount of error in that trial was like ridiculously explosive because um, the oil was just so like. Um, it didn't it, follow like, any of the trends of our, it, it didn't follow the trend of our other data. And that was because the oil, like, greatly decreased the, it was just oil, so it greatly decreased, like, friction and in mess things. Yeah, we didn't include all the data in that the data here, but it's right, the same trial is right here with all the velocity and stuff in it. And you can see it just doesn't really fit with anything at all. Um, this is our same calculations for experiment one. Um, just goes over like how we got the period of rotation, the velocity of the rod, the normal force on the rod, and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I should also talk about how we did the video analysis. Um, we took um, videos of the rod as it was spinning. We um, attached a piece of tape and drew it with a sharpie, so we could see like um, how many times the tape rotated because the tape is attached to the rod. So every time the tape spins, the rod spins an equal amount of times. And then this is something in the first experiment too. Um, there's the coefficient of friction and force of friction, which we didn't calculate in the first experiment. And we didn't really get a whole lot of linear graphs. So these are just kind of graphs that show trends. And these are these two with angle of elevation are the second experiment. And so as you can see here, as we apply, as we raised the conveyor belt to a higher angle, we had to apply more force 
and then, but the velocity did decrease with angle of elevation. And that goes against what we predicted in our hypothesis. We thought that the greater force would make the rod spin faster, like in both experiments, but that was only true in experiment one. Which you see in this graph here. This is experiment one, and as we pull harder, the rod spin faster. But with the angle thing, it was not the same correlation. This is our linear graph, and it's um, applied force versus, versus normal force. Which um, the applied force, because we pulled, because um, the mass was not accelerating, it is equal to the, the force of friction, and so that we use to calculate mu. This is for experiment one, by the way. And this is just the mathematical analysis for that graph showing that um, that the slope is equal to the coefficient of friction. And um, the one that we got for our slope is different than, um, that should be 1.036. Yeah, that's the, um, that's, um, that number there is incorrect. It's, I guess we didn't update that when we um, changed our graph. And um, sources of error that we had in this lab were basically just um, the friction on the rod from the bearings. We, we like couldn't really account for that, so um, we uh, we applied oil to the ends of the rods to try to like decrease the friction as much as possible. But then in some cases there was too much oil. Like but it was only showed up in one trial. So um, but yeah, it was we couldn't really account for that. So um, that was an error. Because um, ideally it would be friction between the rod and the bearing, but that's not really possible. Yeah, that, that's really expensive, <laughs> so we didn't do that. And um, in the video analysis, sometimes um, the rod would. Um, like end in an awkward location, like it would stop spinning, like not at full rotation. We had to like judge like well, how much of a rotation was that? Was it like three fourths of rotation or like five six or like, some weird fraction? And then this is our error analysis for both experiments. We did it on mu, and um, we got fourteen percent error for um, for experiment one, and we got thirty seven percent error for experiment two. With experiment two, there's just a lot. Of, like, <laughs> okay, and then yeah, so um, we found our we found our accepted value for <coughs> mu, but um, we just um, kind of like the experiment we did last year on friction, we um, got the two surfaces and pulled with the known force and um, calculated the mu by dividing the force applied by the weight of the mass. And in conclusion, that part was done last night, right? Yes. Okay, yes. excellent. <laughs> okay, and then, um, yeah, and then in our um, con in conclusion, um, our boss's for experiment one was correct as we applied a greater force, um, the rod spun faster. But experiment two, due to the normal force working against the... We're like the X component of energy working against the our applied force in addition to the force of friction. Yes. And the basis, this goes over that, it talks about the frustration we had in building the system because it was really annoying, it kept breaking, and things didn't work right. We tried wooden dowels and like they just absorbed the oil and weird stuff and didn't spin and broke and... Okay. Thank you. Questions? No questions. All right. All right. Thanks again.